You know how people are when they get spiritually proud. They belong to some kind of a church group or an occult group and say, we are the ones who have, of course, the right teaching. We're the in-group, we are the elect, and everybody else outside is uh, really off the track. But then comes along someone who one-ups them by saying, well, in our circles we are very tolerant, and we accept all religions and all ways as leading to the one. But what they're doing is they're playing the game called we are more tolerant than you are. You see, and in this way, the egocentric being is always in his own trap. So Buddha saw that all his yoga exercises and ascetic disciplines had just been ways of trying to get himself out of the trap in order to save his own skin, in order to find peace for himself. And he realized that that is an impossible thing to do because the motivation ruins the project. He found out then, you see, that there was no trap to get out of except himself. Trap and trapped are one. And when you understand that, there isn't any trap left. I'm going to explain that, of course, more carefully. So, as a result of this experience, he formulated what he calls the Dharma. That is the Sanskrit word for method. You will get a certain confusion when you read books on Buddhism because they switch between Sanskrit and Pali words. The earliest Buddhist scriptures that we know of are written in the Pali language, and Pali is a softened form of Sanskrit. So that, for example, whereas the doctrine of the Buddha is called in Sanskrit the Dharma, but in Pali, and in many books of Buddhism, you'll find the Buddha's doctrine described as the Dhamma. And so in the same way, Karma in Sanskrit, becomes in Pali, Kama. Buddha remains the same. The Dharma, then, is the method. Now, the method of Buddhism, and this is absolutely important to remember, is dialectic. That is to say, it doesn't teach a doctrine you cannot find anywhere what Buddhism teaches, as you can find out what Christianity or Judaism or Islam teaches. Because all Buddhism is a discourse, and what most people suppose to be its teachings are only the opening stages of the dialogue. So, the concern of Buddha as a young man, the problem he wanted to solve, was the problem of human suffering. And so, he formulated his teaching in a very easy way to remember. Uh, all those Buddhist scriptures are full of what you might call mnemonic tricks, numbering things in such a way that they're easy to remember. And so, he proposed, he summed up his teaching in the form of what are called the Four Noble Truths. And the first one, which because it was his main concern, was the truth about Dukkha. Dukkha, suffering, pain, frustration, chronic dis-ease. It is the opposite of Sukha, which means sweet pleasure, etc. So, insofar as the problem posed in Buddhism is dukkha, I don't want to suffer, and I want to find someone or something that can cure me of suffering. That's the problem. 
Now, then if there's a person who solved the problem, a Buddha, people come to him and say, Master, how do we get out of this problem? So what he does is to propose certain things to them. First of all, he points out that with dukkha go two other things. These are respectively called anitya, anitya, and anatman. Anitya means a. Nitya, nitya means permanent. So impermanence, flux, change is characteristic of everything whatsoever. There isn't anything at all in the whole world, in the material world, in the psychic world, in the spiritual world, there is nothing you can catch hold of and hang on to for safety. Nothing. Not only is there nothing you can hang on to, but by the teaching of Anatman, there is no you to hang on to it. In other words, all clinging to life is an illusory hand grasping at smoke. If you can get that into your head and see that that is so, nobody needs to tell you that you ought not to grasp. Because you see, you can't. See, Buddhism is not essentially moralistic. The moralist is the person who tells people that they ought to be unselfish when they still feel like egos. And his efforts are always and invariably futile. Because what happens is he simply sweeps the dust under the carpet and uh, comes back again somehow. But in this case, it involves a complete realization that this is the case. So that's what the teacher puts across to begin with. 